happy Saturday. Coming up on the show, we're going to be talking about somebody who got a lot of discussion, a lot of things written about him shortly after his death or during his life, but some of that work is often attributed to Daniel Defoe. We mentioned in this upcoming episode that there are some other purportedly factual writings that may have been Defoe's work, may or may not have really been by Defoe or actually accurate, and that is something that is part of today's Saturday Classic on Anne Bonny and Mary Read. This episode originally came out on August 15, 2016. Enjoy! Welcome to Stuff You Missed in History Class, a production of iHeartRadio. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Tracy V. Wilson. And I'm Holly Fry. You know what we haven't talked about in a while? What? Pirates. <laughs> it has been a bit. And who doesn't love a good a pirate while. story? I know. And so today we have the much requested duo of Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Reed. And it's like really a lot, a lot of requests. Uh, most of the pirates we have talked about on the show have been captains of their own ships, or in the case of Chungi Sao from the Sarah and Dublina years, a whole fleet of ships. Uh, as a side note, I listened to the beginning of that podcast uh, the other day. I have listened to it before, but I was re-listening to the begin- beginning of it. And Sarah and Dublina also mentioned that they also got a lot of requests for Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed. And so people have been asking for that for quite a while. Uh, Bonnie and Reed, though, they were members of another pirate's crew, and they were made famous by a book called A General History of the Pirates from their first rise and settlement of the island of Providence to the present time. And that book is where most of the information on their lives came from. So we are also going to talk about that book itself in today's show. And so you're probably going to notice when we're talking about the early lives of these uh, two women that we are being weirdly vague. It is possible (laughs) that at about two o'clock yesterday afternoon, I I am Tali and said, I understand why no one did this yet. (laughs) Uh, Because it's weirdly vague. And we are going to talk about why it is weirdly vague in the third act of today's show when we talk about this book that made Anne Bonny and Mary Read quite famous. So we'll start with Mary Reed, who was most likely born in England. And although there's no historical documentation to substantiate it, according to A General History of Pirates, her mother married a sailor and had a son. And that sailor didn't return from a voyage, and Mary Reed's mother, still living with her in-laws, later became pregnant. And enough time had passed that her departed husband could not have been the father. So to avoid the stigma of having a child out of wedlock, she went away to the country. Before she was born, Mary's half-brother died. And then after her birth, Mary's mother stayed in the country with her until she started to run out of money. Then she went back to London with the hope of leaving the young Mary with her late husband's mother, disguised as her late son. She was basically trying to pass her daughter off as her now-deceased son to her mother-in-law. Mary's purported grandmother in this situation didn't agree to take her off her mother's hands, but she did offer them some money to help with expenses, which meant that Mary had to continue to masquerade as her own deceased half-brother. And this went on until Mary's grandmother uh, died when Mary was about 13 years old. And her mother, who by this point had filled her in about her actual parentage, decided that she should continue her life of disguise. And so Mary went to work as a footboy. However, before long, Mary got tired of that job and decided to go to see herself, hoping to win a commission. That did not work out, though, so she spent some time in a military regiment, still disguised uh, as a man. And there she met her future husband, who was a fellow soldier, who she, quote, allowed to discover that she was really a woman. When they got married, she quit military life, and for a while, she abandoned her disguise. Her husband, however, died not long after they married, and Mary Reed decided to head for the Caribbean. And according, again, to the general history of pirates, Reed resumed her disguise and fell in with another pirate crew first. But the historical record seems to suggest that she stayed on the right side of the law until, for unknown reasons, she disguised herself as a man and joined the crew of John Rackham, a.k.a. Calico Jack. And there was another woman on Calico Jack's ship, and that woman was Anne Bonny. 
As for Anne Bonny's early upbringing, Anne Bonny was reportedly born near Cork in Ireland. She was also an illegitimate child, the illegitimate child of an attorney. And that attorney is reported by some people to be William Cormick, although this is really unsubstantiated. Bonnie's mother is reported to have been one of the household maids in this attorney's home. Also under the cal- the category of reportedly here uh, is that her father eventually took Anne to live with him, uh, but disguised her as a boy, supposedly a relative that he was training to be a clerk. And he did this to avoid raising the suspicions of his estranged wife, who knew that he had had an affair with the maid, but did not know that that affair had produced Anne. It's all very confusing. There's there's so much uh, uh, drag and, and like shifted identities and yeah, and I do want to clarify. Yeah, I do want to clarify that for both of these women, I mean, according to every historical account, these were disguises and not expressions of their gender. Uh, this ruse, by the way, did not work. Uh, his wife found out what was going on, so Anne's father Anne, and Anne's mother, the maid, relocated from Ireland to Charleston, South Carolina, where they all lived until Anne's mother died when Anne was 13. 13 seems to be the magic age to lose a relative in this story. Yeah, yeah, they are very similar, <laughs> according <laughs> to general history of the pirates. When Anne took her mother's place running the household... Uh, There were rumors that she had an incredibly bad temper. One of these rumors was that she actually killed a serving maid with, like, a table knife. Another rumor was that she had beaten a man who tried to sexually assault her, basically senseless. It's possible that in this behavior and the habit that she developed of carousing with pirates, that Anne was inspired by Grace O'Malley, which is an anglicized version of the Irish name Grania Nemalia, uh... O'Malley plundered off the coast of Ireland in the 16th century and had a reputation for being incredibly fierce. She also, in case you are wondering or are about to write in, is already a frequently requested podcast topic. Anne's father, frustrated by her behavior and the impact that it was having on his business, arranged a marriage for her, but instead she got married to a sailor named John Bonney in 1718. They went to the Bahamas, where John Bonney started to work for Governor Woods Rogers as an informant against pirates. Essentially, he would turn pirates into the governor to get the reward money. And there's another version of that story as well, that Anne wanted to go to the Bahamas on her own, so she hired a woman to pretend to be her mother so that she could book passage. And then she met John Bonney and married him after she was already in the Bahamas. So two differing accounts. Regardless, at some point during their time in the Bahamas, Anne Bonnie also fell in with Calico Jack Rackham, and the two began an affair. When John Bonney found out about it, Rackham offered to pay him to divorce her, but he refused to grant that divorce. Ultimately, uh, Anne abandoned her husband and joined Rackham on his pirate ship, although she did leave it temporarily to give birth to their child in Cuba, and then she rejoined the ship later. And we're going to talk about Anne Bonny and Mary Reed's brief lives with Calico Jack after we first pause and have a word from one of our sponsors. By 1720, both Anne Bonny and Mary Reed were part of John Rackham, a.k.a. Calico Jack Rackham's crew. As for Rackham, he had served as quartermaster under another pirate named Charles Vane aboard Vane's ship, the Brigantine. Uh, During this time of the crew, the Brigantine came across a French man of war that Rackham and several of the rest of the crew wanted to take over, but Vane refused. The members of the crew who rejected this decision from their captain all rallied around Rackham. They deposed Vane. They put him and the rest of the naysayers aboard a small sloop, uh, leaving the brigantine under Rackham's command instead. 
On two different occasions after taking over the brigantine, Jack Rackham actually gave up piracy and took the king's pardon. He was also briefly a privateer. However, he just kept returning to piracy. And the last time he did, it was because purportedly it was discovered that Anne Bonny was again pregnant with his child, while still married to John Bonny. And they had been threatened with whipping if they continued their affair, so they just left. On August 22nd of 1720, Jack Rackham, Anne Bonny, and Mary Reed were all part of a party that stole a sloop called the William, which belongs to a man named John Ham. Sadly, that is with only one M and not two. (laughs) They took on a crew of 12 and began sailing the William around the Bahamas, plundering as they went. They mostly, for a while, went after small uh, fishing boats, and they would just take the fish and the tackle and then be on their way. Reed struck up a relationship with one of the other pirates, although he is never named in any of the the accounts. She was apparently fond enough of him that when he was challenged to a duel by another pirate, she challenged that pirate to her own duel two hours before and killed him on the spot. Sources disagree about whether Bonnie and Reed maintained their disguises while aboard Rackham's ship. In some versions, they made no effort to hide their gender— but they did don more masculine clothing when they were raiding other ships, basically, because it was more practical. Others claimed that they steadfastly disguised themselves until they were eventually brought to trial, even though Rackham, of course, knew Bonnie was a woman because he was in a relationship with her. Still, others claim that they wore men's clothing, but still were very obviously, to any outside observer, women. (laughs) A general history of pirates seems to change its mind on this score, like, within the same paragraph. <laughs> I, I I kept having to go back and be like, no, but it said, but that's, that's not what it said. Two sentences ago. <laughs> <laughs> On October 19th, Rackham and crew captured a British schooner called the Neptune, stealing its cargo, which included 50 rolls of tobacco. The next day, they captured and kept the British schooner Mary and Sarah. And when they realized they didn't have enough crew to manage three ships, they let some of their prisoners go aboard the Neptune. And at about the same time, they also robbed a canoe crewed by a woman named Dorothy Thomas, who Rackham let go over Bonnie and Reed's objections that she might report them to the authorities. Uh, They didn't really need to be worried about that because the authorities already knew. Uh, (laughs) Governor... Governor Woods Rogers had heard about Rackham's piratical activities that at this point were off the coast of Jamaica. And on September 5th, he had dispatched the privateer Captain Jonathan Barnett to take care of it. Bonnie and Reed were on deck when Barnett's ship found and approached them on October 22nd of 1720. By this time, the crew, for reasons that are not clear, had shrunk from 12 people to seven. And most of the crew had spent much of the night drinking with the crew of a turtling boat that they had come across and invited aboard. Rackham gave the order to flee, but ultimately they were overtaken. So most of Rackham's crew were intoxicated when Barnett ordered them to surrender. Bonnie and Reed, however, refused to surrender and also were not intoxicated. And they were at least not intoxicated enough to not fight. They fought back with pistols and blades until they were captured. Reed was purportedly so incensed at the fact that the two of them were basically the only ones offering any resistance that she yelled below decks for the men to come up and fight. And when no one answered her, she fired into the hold, killing one of Rackham's crew in the process. I was going to liken this to like (laughs) those projects that happen sometimes when you're in school or at work with a team and you do all the work. (laughs) But yeah. you, usually you don't kill your other team members. Uh, no. Bonnie and Reed's attempt to hold off Barnett's crew was unsuccessful. The William and the Mary and Sarah, which they were still keeping as a prize, were both captured. Two Frenchmen who had been forced into service testified against them and were allowed to go. Trials for Rackham and his crew began on November 16th of 1720, and they were all found guilty and hanged. Rackham's last request was to get to see Anne Bonny one last time, but she had no patience for him at all, purportedly saying, quote, if you had fought like a man, you need not have been hanged like a dog. Bodies of Rackham and two of his crew were then displayed in chains along the coast as a warning to other pirates. Anne Bonny and Mary Reed were tried on November 28th. 
According to the general history of pirates, quote, two other pirates were tried that belonged to Rackham's crew and, being convicted, were brought up and asked if either of them had anything to say why sentence of death should not pass upon them, in like manner as had been done to all the rest. And both of them pleaded their bellies, being quick with child, and prayed that execution might be stayed, whereupon the court passed sentence, as in cases of piracy, but ordered them back till a proper jury should be appointed to inquire into the matter. So both women were spared execution because they were pregnant and then sent to prison. And Bonnie apparently survived her time in prison, but it's really unclear what happened to her after that. She basically disappears from the historical record. Mary Reed died, uh, possibly of a fever or possibly possibly due to complications of childbirth before being released from prison. She's probably the same Mary Reed who was mentioned in a death record from April 28th of 1721. So uh, next up, we're going to talk about uh, why is this episode so weirdly vague and what is up with the book that Tracy did used for a lot of the research. (laughs) We're going to talk about all of that. Uh, But first, we will pause once again for a word from one of our fantastic sponsors. So... A general history of the pirates from their first rise and settlement in the island of Providence to the present time was published under the name of Captain Charles Johnson. The edition that is cited most often is the second edition, which is significantly expanded from the first edition. Both of them were published in 1724. A whole second volume came out in 1728. And this book was hugely popular in its day. There were four editions in print by 1726 and then multiple versions in multiple other languages as well. Historians generally agree that Captain Charles Johnson is a pseudonym, and there's some debate about who actually wrote this book. It's often attributed to Daniel Defoe of Robinson Crusoe and Maul Flanders fame. Uh, The first person that made that connection was John Robert Moore in 1932. And it's common enough that a lot of sources say it's by Daniel Defoe without including any qualifiers to that assertion. Uh, One other candidate is Nathaniel Mist, who was a sailor before becoming a printer and a journalist. And there's definitely no documentation of any Captain Charles Johnson. Yeah, a lot of a lot of places just take completely for granted that it was uh, Daniel Defoe who wrote it, but but apparently John Robert Moore's methodology was basically, hey, you know who's writing this sounds like to me, <laughs> Daniel <laughs> Defoe. I bet Daniel Defoe wrote this like that, and there there's there's more of a paper trail that says maybe it's uh, Nathaniel Mist or some other person than Daniel Defoe, which seems to be mostly like a gut instinct. So. I mean, based on all of this nebulosity about who wrote it uh, and the fact of the things that we've read, I mean, we can really just take for granted that at least some of this book is embellished. But even so, it crops up again and again and again as source material about lots of pirates uh, who lived up through the early 18th century, including some other previous subjects from our podcast, including Blackbeard and Steed Bonnet. So, Uh, In addition to being like a go-to source that just is cited over and over, it basically standardized a lot of the things that we think of as the golden age of piracy, and it sort of standardized the image of a lot of these particular pirates. Like Calico Jack Rackham got his name in this book based on his garish clothing, which might have actually been made up, but it's like how everybody imagines Calico Jack Rackham now. Now that's a matter of accepted history, even though we we don't know. Uh, And when it comes to Bonnie and Reed specifically, Captain Johnson spends a pretty good chunk of words reiterating that the story that he is telling is absolutely true. In the introduction, he takes time to mention their trials and living eyewitnesses as additional proof that this really happened. And then he goes on to say, quote, It is certain we have produced some particulars which were not so publicly known. The reason is we were more inquisitive into the circumstances of their past lives than other people who had no other design than that of gratifying their own private curiosity. 
If there are some incidents and turns in their stories which may give them a little the air of a novel, they are not invented or contrived for that purpose. It is a kind of reading this author is but little acquainted with, but as he himself was exceedingly diverted with them when they were related to him, he thought they might have the same effect upon the reader. He's basically saying... This is totally true, you guys. (laughs) Yeah. I know this sounds made up, but it really happened. And then, once he actually gets to Anne Bonny uh, and Mary Reed's part of the book, which is within the cap, the chapter that's on Calico Jack Rackham, he takes the time to say it again. He says, quote, The odd incidents of their rambling lives are such that some may be tempted to think the whole story is no better than a novel or romance. But since it is supported by many thousand witnesses, I mean the people of Jamaica who were present at their trials and heard the story of their lives upon the first discovery of their sex, the truth of it can be no more contested than that there are such men in the world as Roberts and Blackbeard who were pirates. <laughs> So much insistence, like for for real, for real. I mean, just, I mean, I know it sounds weird, but really this is weird. It's, but it's real is basically, what do you say? Yeah, this is just a whole lot of reassurance that he's being truthful. Uh, (laughs) On top of that, the accounts of Bonnie and Reed's early lives are simultaneously incredibly vague and full of completely unnecessary detail. There's very little in the way of names and dates and specific places, and yet the story of Anne Bonnie's young life spends at least four pages on the saga of three silver spoons that Anne's father tried to use to scare away the maid's suitor, which instead revealed his affair to his wife and landed the maid in jail. And in addition to that whole spoon drama, there's also a lot of gossipy aside in Bonnie's life story about all of the drama between her mother and her father and her father's wife with multiple extramarital affairs and even an inheritance to argue over. There's also a lot of gossipy titillation about Bonnie and Reed's time on the ship together and their lives beforehand as adults. Uh, In... This particular account, as told in the general history of the pirates, Rackham obviously knew that Anne Bonny was a woman because they were in a relationship together. But uh, Mary Reed joined the crew disguised as a man and then maintained that disguise once aboard. Then, according to this book, Anne Bonny, quote, took a particular liking to her and then, quote, first discovered her sex to Mary Reed, Mary Reed knowing what she would be at and being very sensible of her own incapacity that way, was forced to come to a right understanding with her. And to the great disappointment of Anne Bonny, she let her know she was a woman also. So basically, according to uh, this book, uh, Anne Bonny was like, hey, uh, I'm actually a woman if you want to get together. And Mary Reed was like, oh, you know, actually I can't because I'm also a woman. (laughs) And it's just, it's all told in this very gossipy kind of flirty winky way. Right. And Jack Rackham was apparently incredibly jealous of Bonnie's attention to Reed, at which point Bonnie let him know that there was nothing to worry about because Reed was, as we've just been saying, also a woman. And this whole bit, as Tracy said, it's told with a lot of slyness and, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Like, we're all, ooh, it's all very titillating. (laughs) Yeah. And then, I'm going to say I did not get to read the whole entire book while preparing this thing. But I did read the 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 chapters on some of the other pirates to see to see whether my suspicion that all of this like gossipy titillation about Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed was unique to their stories and basically yeah i mean there's plenty of stuff that seems sensationalized and overly dramatized in the other pirate stories but like Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed are really a whole category apart in terms of like sensational uh gossip and on top of that the depictions of Anne Bonny and Mary Reed shifted in subsequent editions of the book. So in the first edition, the, the illustration of them, you would uh, probably think of as more stereotypically masculine. They're in men's clothing. They're holding weapons. They look fierce. Their hair is down and long, but that wouldn't have necessarily meant that that, like, that was a women's hairstyle at the time. 
uh, and they have this baggy clothing on. So in looking at them, today's reader might not immediately categorize them as any particular gender before actually looking at the caption that spells out that these are women that are dressed as men. Uh, In the Dutch second edition, though, they're wearing open jackets that reveal their bare chests. And it's unquestionable that, number one, they are women, and that, number two, there is some degree of naughtiness in this whole affair. Like, it is definitely a, like, the kind of picture that you would see in the textbook in seventh grade and giggle with your friends over. (laughs) And the text describing Bonnie and Reed shifts as well. By 1765, Reed specifically refers to Bonnie as her lover, whereas that was not the case in earlier uh, editions. The number and amorousness of Anne Bonnie's affairs also grows in subsequent editions. So, long story short, Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed were definitely real people who were definitely aboard Calico Jack Rackham's ship. They definitely stood trial. They definitely were spared Uh, execution because they were each pregnant. But our conceptions of them draw mostly from a really sensational problem-riddled book that got even more sensationalized about them in particular over time. In a way, it's kind of disappointing because, like, they've become such... Like, people have... They're in the collective memory as, like, these two incredible, fierce lady pirates who fought bravely next to each other and, like, had all these wild adventures... Uh, And in reality, the historical documentation of them is a few sentences mostly about being on trial and being spared execution due to pregnancy. And then it's like a weird sexy romp in some some versions. Yeah, like it's just very, I mean, number one, there's like a lot of stuff in it that is that is very, uh, very gendered, even by today's standards, very gendered. And then a lot of it that's very clearly like meant to titillate people right while not being like explicit but hinting at explicitness right a lot <laughs> uh. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us on this Saturday. Since this episode is out of the archive, if you heard an email address or a Facebook URL or something similar over the course of the show, that could be obsolete now. Our current email address is historypodcast at iheartradio.com. Our old How Stuff Works email address no longer works. You can find us all over social media at Missed in History. And you can subscribe to our show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the iHeartRadio app, and wherever else you listen to podcasts. Stuff You Missed in History Class is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. (laughs) 